Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today we're on location in Los Angeles, California. Today we're working on this clean El Camino. We're going to be going over the hydraulic setup, seeing what's wrong with it. Um, I pretty much looked it over. I know it's a front pump, so I'm going to be going over it with you, showing you what's, what's the matter with it, and then we're going to be replacing the front pump. So uh, let's get started, and I'll show you what I'm doing step by step. All right. So basically what happened is um, I was working on this car last week. It came in. Uh, same issue, front pump issue. I uh, opened it up and uh, what I noticed is it's an older block and um, it only had uh, two, hold, uh, two bolts holding the gear on. Uh, most of your newer blocks are going to basically have uh, four bolt holes and you always want to use all four bolt holes to hold your gear on. Um, on this one, one of the two bolts actually came loose. Um, what happened is that uh, um, it looks like the threads were um, basically uh, pulled out and uh, one, of the, one of the bolts came out and uh, the gear, gear actually had enough pressure to pull away from the block a little bit and shot the o-ring uh, between the gear and the block out and basically the um, car's not lifting because um, none of the pressure is actually going through the uh, out of the block. It's basically uh, bleeding within the block. Uh, what I did was uh, re-tap that that block because it's an all aluminum block. It didn't have steel inserts. Again, this is an older block. Um, and I used a little bit longer bolt and then I replaced the uh, O-ring just to get the customer a little bit more time and not have to basically swap out a block and uh, do any uh, more repairs that would cost them more money. Um, unfortunately, it only lasted him a day or so. He called me, said it was working and then it didn't, it stopped working. So I'm assuming pretty much uh, that repair that the rest of the uh, threads actually probably pulled out and the same thing happened. Uh, we'll get this thing out, um, look at it again. I'll connect the ground and stuff like that, uh, let you hear it, but it's pretty much you're going to hear the uh, pump in, uh, motor and gear spin. Again, you have the um, motor and gear spinning, car's not lifting, so I'm assuming it's the same thing as, as last week, but again, let's open it up, see if it's the same or anything different. Again, before you work on anything hydraulic-wise, you always want to disconnect the batteries, uh, or disconnect your ground. Uh, since I know I'm going to basically be uh, swapping out I'm pretty much going to be replacing this whole block. The only thing I'm going to keep is the dump on this because uh, he has three engraved dumps. Um, and they're gold and chrome, they look nice. Uh, basically, it's the nicest thing on the setup. So that's the only thing I am going to be keeping. So I'm pretty much going to dismantle this whole uh, pump here on the car to make it lighter to pull out and basically uh, empty out all the fluid here. Um, in, in a bucket, um, basically, so it's easier, lighter to move and get going. Um, especially, like I said, I'm not going to be reusing this again. So let's start breaking it down. positive post from the uh, starter motor and basically in any hydraulic setup uh, the motors are nothing more than basically a starter motor um, some of them are more standard like these two on the end you'll see they have a black end cap these are more basic like a true starter motor uh, some like these, you'll ask what the difference is. Um, it has open fins, basically to allow extra cooling, and then they usually have like a ball bearing end cap, also to allow the um, motor to spin more freely, which also reduces friction and keeps them cooler. Um, 
most of these are usually 12 or 24 volt but in any uh, hydraulic setup of course we're running basically uh, 60 volts 72 volts or even higher than that so of course you want to keep um, the motors as cool as possible so that's why especially on the front pump you'll always see <clears throat> something with a ball bearing end cap and something that's vented to keep it as cool as possible On this, pull the motor out. Uh, key's good, so you know the key's not a problem. Uh, motor's good. Um, I do see some oil uh, between the uh, gear and the motor, so I'm not sure if the actual uh, seal went bad between the gear and the motor. Um, and I do actually have some oil on the motor. The motor itself is actually good, so can reuse it. This setup also too has a smaller 3 8 inline check valve. I don't really like these. These are good for basic small setups. Um, but um, if you start hopping or any serious pressure on them, they do tend to fail. Um, the pump that I'm putting in it has a Parker uh, 3 8 valve uh, check valve, which is a lot more sturdy. You'll see it, it's a girthier piece. Um, so uh, again, like I said, I'm not gonna end up reusing this. Um, the pump is going in here is a lot better, so let's get going on that. So that's it, basically the pump's out. Again, basically, I'm going to go over to the uh, bench vise, take the fittings off of that dump, put that dump onto the new pump, and then we'll get it installed over here. Um, again, from that setup, basically, the only thing I'm reusing is this uh, uh, dump. As you can see, basically, it's a nice gold-plated engraved dump. Uh, pretty much makes the setup, so that's why I'm going to reuse it. Uh, there was nothing wrong with it. Um, so basically we'll reuse it. The only thing I'm going to do is remove these uh, fittings coming off of the three ports um, because the way that I'm plumbing uh, the um, new pump is a little bit different. So basically I'll remove these, start plumbing the new fittings, and then we'll put that on the pump. So basically it's start working on it here. Again, if you ever have a nice, uh, anything nice, chrome, gold plated, whatever, engraved, uh, anytime you clamp it in the vise, you always basically want to make sure that uh, uh, you protect it. So I'm going to use a microfiber uh, cloth. Uh, our check valve is uh, chrome plated too, and some of our fittings are chrome plated too. So I'm going to—I brought some uh, blue masking tape. Um, I'll show you basically how I usually wrap those before I hit them uh, with any type of wrench or anything to protect them. Uh, this way, you don't mar or scratch any of the chrome. Again, we're just going to basically be taking off the old fittings uh, since our new pump's not plumbed the same way. Uh, you can reuse them, it's basically personal preference. Uh, I, plumb, I plumb all my pumps kind of a, a certain way. I try to, basically what I try and do is eliminate um, going from, uh, eliminate so many fittings. So I'll show you basically Basically, instead of coming out of here and then using another fitting, 
um, I'll come in here and basically everything's built into one fitting. Um, so basically I'm eliminating areas for leaks, you know, with hydraulics. Um, anytime you have a fitting to fitting, uh, you, you're basically opening up your chances of leaks. Hydraulics, pneumatics, anything. So if, if you can do it all in one fitting, why not do it all in one fitting? Also too, it tightens up the setup. It gets everything nice, tight and compact and it looks a lot better. So instead of having this be two fittings, it's all down to one. Also too, like any other setup, I told you I'm getting rid of that cheaper check valve and I'm, I'm doing a larger 3 8 Parker and this one's chrome plated. As I mentioned, uh, my check valve is uh, chrome plated. Some of the fittings are chrome plated. Basically, where I'm going to hit it with uh, a wrench or touch anything with a wrench, I'm just going to go over it with a uh, blue masking tape. Uh, this way, to prevent any marring or anything that you'll visually see. Um, this isn't a true show setup, it's just a street setup. But still, you want to take your time and make stuff look as nice as possible, even though it's not a show setup. I mean, you want to have pride in anything you do, whether it's street, show, whatever. Nothing works worse on, on fittings, in my opinion, than uh, you know wrench marks and marring, even if it's just metal fit fittings, um, uh, non-plated. Um, that's why I always try and use a correct size. Some people go in there and you know use anything, and you can see basically, since it wasn't the right size, it starts slipping and marring the fittings, and it just looks ugly. It just you know makes the set look ugly. Uh, when you're putting together check valves, just know that they are directional. So make sure that you are plumbing them in the right direction. The flow, basically, a check valve uh, makes sure, uh, prevents fluid from traveling backwards. Make sure that it only goes one way. Uh, so do make sure that you are putting them together um, in the correct direction. So anything with pressure, I do want to make sure I get really, really tight. If it's a return line and there's no pressure on it, I mean, you don't have to overexert yourself. Um, but if it's a pressure line, you do want to make sure you get it as tight as possible without breaking the fitting. Um, especially on hydraulics. Uh, with air, I would say basically stay away from steel steel fittings and go to brass um, this way you don't have to tighten them as much brass is a softer metal so basically it'll help do some of the work for you so when you're tightening it, it it's going to basically bend and uh, conform so the uh, the threads if it's a pipe fitting it's going to start to actually bend and and uh, basically lock in on itself putting Teflon tape on your fittings you always want to make sure that you're doing it in the correct direction uh, basically I always grab my fittings and spin them clockwise uh, away from me um, basically like as if I'm tightening them 
um, and having the trail of my duct tape at the end. Um, this way it's the same thing like as if I'm putting it in the fitting. Uh, this way when I'm tightening it, any tail that's left over, it's not going to catch and try and unravel. If you do it the other way, um, the Teflon tape may try and unravel when you first thread it. Uh, the other thing too, you want to make sure that you don't Teflon tape maybe that first thread or, thread or two. Uh, this way you don't accidentally uh, get any Teflon tape breaking off and getting into the system and contaminating the system. basically on the old setup they actually ran the pressure through the dump um, that's another thing that's actually I don't like to do basically it slows down the setup so on this one our pressure is coming straight out the pump going uh, straight through the check valve and into the system uh, so we're going to basically be plugging off uh, one of the three ports Basically, you have your pressure set going this way, dump normally closed, and then when you open it, uh, you return. So basically, I'm putting my slow down right on the bottom side of the um, dump. Basically, here's everything assembled. Um, I like this type of plumbing because everything's nice, tight, and compact. Um, look how close the check valve is to the dump and everything, so your setup's not all spread out. It's nice, tight, and compact on the uh, on top of the pump. So basically, this doesn't overpower the pump itself. It's proportional to the pump, and it looks a lot better than what was on there. All right, so let's go get this on the car. All right, so we got the new front pump 
uh, installed. Uh, basically, we're going to be putting on uh, the dump and check valve assembly that we put together, uh, the return line, uh, wiring it back up, hooking up the front hose, and testing and making sure that everything works. Uh, also, filling the uh, pump up with oil. So we got the new pump in. I got the uh, dump and check valve assembly uh, bolted on, uh, return line bolted on. I went and redid the uh, wire going to the dump valve. Again, uh, originally they had a, just a normal barrel connector on that. I went and put a female and a male uh, spade connector so that basically you can plug it in and unplug it in anytime you have to service the pump. Um, or even if you just have to service the dump itself or, or check valve, you can unbolt those and just unplug that and take that off. We'll work on that workbench. Makes it nice and easy instead of having to cut something and recrimp crimp it every time. You can just unplug it, plug it back in. Um, right now, let's just uh, connect up the motor and then fill the tank with oil and test out the system. Alright, motor's hooked up. I'm gonna fill up the uh, tank. Um, I always use a 10W30 in all hydraulic setups. Uh, just regular SAE oil, non synthetic. I know on all the forms there's always a debate on what type of oil to use. I've been using this probably for years. Um, I've been doing hydraulic setups since the mid 90s. Um, pretty much I've never had an issue. Um, it works really good, especially in our environment. I'm in Southern California, so Los Angeles County area. Um, again, never really have an issue with any of the setups. Setup's all done, let's see what it could do. Again, this is just a street setup, a single pump, six batteries, and a number nine motor, or a number nine gear.
right, so that does it for this. Um, we pretty much finished this up. Came out good, I'm happy with it. Uh, if you haven't done so already, please make sure you smash the like and subscribe button. It really helps us out a lot. Stay tuned for future videos. We're going to be doing a lot of other stuff, not only on lowriders. We'll be doing C10s, uh, classic trucks, um, other classics, uh, some modern European cars such as Mercedes, BMWs. Uh, a lot of interesting uh, content. Oh, also, we'll be doing some classic Volkswagens too. Uh, stay tuned. Thanks again. See you.